So my name is Paul Brett, and I'm the Division Director for Nuclear Sciences at, at Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. Um, I've been at the laboratory for about 25 years now, and I've started out in our hot cell facility conducting uh, research on high-level wastes and uh, worked on a number of different uh, programs over the years. Can you describe to me the intersection of molten salt reactors and this an analysis on the yeah, composition? So at Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, we've been doing a, a lot of work for, for many years on using spectroscopy for real-time measurement of complex or species in, in complex uh, environments. So we first developed the technology around uh, high-level waste problems at the Hanford site, the, the tank waste from legacy production of nuclear weapons. And we've now taken that technology and applied it to separation challenges for Office of Nuclear Energy. It's, uh, it's very unique in that you know, this technology has been around for a little while. So what I'm really talking about is using uh, online monitoring with Raman, spectroscopy, UV vis, spectroelectrochemistry. So that technology is, has been under development for a while. We've really uh, uh, worked heavily to perfect that technique for complex mixtures. In the background, of course, there was the molten salt reactor, which was operated back in the, in the 60s. And operating that reactor, to operate the reactor successfully, it's really important to understand the, the evolution of the chemistry within that system. And so that uh, technology had been developed for the, the, the quantification. And uh, the, interest, the increased interest in the molten salt reactor over the last couple of years um, uh, came about, and, and as we started to become aware of that, uh, more aware of it, uh, we were able to say that, that this uh, spectroelectrochemistry uh, would be a, a very good technique for measuring online the uh, behaviors of materials in that reactor environment. So it seems like an obvious marriage of the, the reactor, the molten salt reactor designs and uh, analysis. Why is it just in the last couple of years that the two are coming together? So the molten salt reactor technology has, has while it's been around since the, the 1960s, uh, it really took sort of a hiatus. You know, the, the research into that system uh, dropped off for, for many decades while, uh, while the other areas were of active research. And so the, the sudden surge over probably the last, uh, really probably about the last three years in molten salt reactors uh, is making people go back and, and look at um, the challenges of molten salt reactors and, and what's available and has been developed uh, in other areas that could be applicable to that system. So, so we're really now taking the technologies that have been developed over the last few decades and applying them to that, that previous challenge. And what kind of problems are you looking to avoid by monitoring the composition? So you, you have to really look at the molten salt reactor as a, uh, as a constantly evolving chemical system. So you've got the, uh, the chemistry that you, you start with in the reactor, but you also got the, uh, the constant ingrowth of fission products and corrosion products, as well as the opportunity for chemical separations, all of that happening in a, in a high dose radiation environment. So the, uh, the chemistry of that system is going to be very important to understand when you're trying to control the reactor. So the, these sorts of tools allow for that online monitoring that uh, will enable both the operation of the reactor as well as uh, the chemical separations that may be associated with it. Are there any new applications this opens up? The molten salt reactors offer a, a lot of advantages. They operate at higher temperature. There's a more effective steam cycle. Um, the fuel, in many cases, is integral to the coolant, so there's no potential for a loss of coolant accident. There's no water associated with the systems, so the chances for a steam explosion are basically non-existent, and therefore it simplifies designs around pressure vessels. But, but one of the other things that, that this does is the direction we're going for, for the reactors also supports a lot of other applications. So molten salts are also proposed for fusion reactors as a, a, a first blanket material to help cool the reactors as well as transfer heat to those steam systems. So very similar in many ways to, the, uh, to a, a fission reactor. It's very similar chemistry to uh, heat storage. So if you're looking at solar energy and storage of that solar energy, that molten salt chemistry is very similar. And, and then of course, there's all the other things that you might do with a nuclear reactor around um, process heat and, uh, and production of medical isotopes and other things. So the reactor has a lot of applications 
and the, the technologies that are being developed to enable that reactor also have spin-offs into other uh, applications. I was wondering if there's any applications that this monitoring most directly feeds into. The initial uh, goal is really to monitor the chemistry to enable the reactor operation. You know, the, the, the interesting thing about a molten salt reactor, of course, is that since in many cases, many of these designs, you have a liquid fuel, you can really put whatever you want into that fuel in order to uh, produce products. So, um, you know, one of those might be uh, medical isotope production. Uh, currently, the, the main focus is on the introduction of thorium into that fuel cycle so that you can inbreed uranium-233 to continue the, uh, the reactor as a, as a thermal breeder. But the opportunities to introduce other things into either a blanket or directly into that, uh, that salt um, are there for production of other isotopes of interest. Have you had to explain molten salt reactors to anyone who um, has a hard time comprehending just this very different type of reactor yeah. design? Most uh, scientists are familiar with light water reactor designs where the fuel is in the form of an oxide within fuel rods and water, light water, so ordinary water, um, is, the, uh, is the coolant as well as the moderator. You know, the molten salt reactor design is, is, is radically different from that. Usually people have to have a, a sort of a crash course to understand um, the differences, advantages, and, and uh, modes of operation. There's so many different types of salt, right? When you have a, a water-cooled reactor, I, I get the feeling that there's not a lot of choices in what you're going to add to the water. So there are at least, um, within the current proposed designs, at least 10 different salt mixtures that are proposed. Um, they're mixtures of either chlorides or, or fluoride salts. And each of those have, a, have very uh, wide ranging chemical and physical properties which will drive the potential reactor performance. So understanding those properties uh, is, is very important. It seems like there's so much um, studying taking place on the salt chemistry. I, I can't imagine that there isn't a lot of overlapping research. What's really nice and what Office of Nuclear Energy is facilitating is a lot of collaboration between the different national laboratories. So Oak Ridge is, is uh, the lead laboratory for the molten salt reactor campaign, but there are many, many contributors um, to that program. That, that research is ramping up very quickly. It's a constantly evolving area right now with a lot of change. So these kinds of workshops are extremely important.